Hi everyone, welcome back. Follow up to the video I just made on interquartile range and the five number summary is the next thing that comes from it is a graph that applies to it all. So before I talk much about the graph, I'm going to go back to these numbers here because in my previous video I used 11 numbers and I used 12 and this one is 13 numbers. Each time, especially when the numbers are fairly small that you're going through the details, it's a bit tricky and you've got to be careful about what's going on. So I'll same as I said in the last one, I've got 13 numbers. There are people who will say all sorts of things like half of that's six, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll look at it and go, there's six that way, and then I go one, two, three, four, five, six that way, there's the middle. So if you want to think that way, half of it's six and a half. So we're going to come in six, we're going to come in six, and there's the middle. I still say for a lot of students, you're better off to go one, two, three, four, five, six, there are the six numbers from each end, so there's your middle end. So that's your median, which a lot of people refer to as Q2. So it's the second quarter. So first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. And of course the obvious ones you've got is the min. Well, I'm gonna write this time the smallest. So the smallest is four, and that's called Q0. It's like the starting number. And that one's the biggest which we can call the max. I probably should write that that's the max and that's the mean. There's all sorts of words you can use for this. And that's the fourth quarter, the end of the fourth quarter. So four quarters make a whole, and that's where you get that one there. Let's have a look at what happens in between. So here's a rule, if you want a rule, if it's odd number, of an odd number of numbers, a bit weird to say, an odd number in the data. So there's our data and there's an odd number of them. So what we do is we, if it's odd, we cross out the middle. I could say cross out the middle of the number. I just want to nag about cross out the middle. So the hardest thing is just finding the middle and going cross it out. And that leaves us with six on this side and six on that side. So let's go through these six as well. One, two, three. There's two middles here in the bottom half. So what's the middle of six and seven? Now most people are okay and they come up with six and a half. If you're stuck, you can always go six plus seven, six plus seven, and divide it by two, you get the 13 on two, and then you get your six and a half. So if that works for you, either way. Now here's something that often mucks students up. The top half, oh that by the way is Q1, which a lot of people call the lower quartile. So there's six, one, two, three, there's two 14s, and students get really mixed up with two 14s, and I say, is it seven? No. Halfway between 14 and 14 is 14. So I would like to talk about money again. So if you had $14 and I had $14, and I say, let's split that in half. So it's $28 altogether, and we get 14 each. So it stays 14, it doesn't change. So if they're both the same, so another rule, if they're the same, it stays the same. So probably I should write that as a rule. If they are the same, it stays the same. So 14 and 14, the middle of 14 and 14 years, 14. So here's the middle here. I'm going to go down there. Oh, by the way, I normally put that line all the way through. So there's 14. That's called the Q3, the third quarter. First quarter, second, third, a quarter, third quarter, and it's called the upper quarter. Now, that was all so we can draw this graph here. Now, I have a lot of students who struggle with drawing a graph. Now, I don't, always, I don't write every number. If you write every second number, that's okay. Some people will write every fifth number. Some people will struggle with every fifth number. So the smallest number we've got is four. So I've got a four there. Now, some people draw it above, and some people draw it on the line. I'm gonna draw this one above. So I put a line for the four, so that's our Q0 or our min. Let's go up here and draw the biggest, which is 18, and put a line. Now, some people don't put a line at the end. It's your choice if you want to. I prefer it. I think it makes it more obvious. So that one's Q4, which is also called the max. And you go, what was the middle? The middle was 11, and cross it out. So there's my 11, so I go to there, and I put a little line. So that's called Q2, which is also called the median and median, just like the median strip in a road, median strip is a concrete in the middle. So it's the middle, and then the other two. 
Now a six and a half, some people have trouble with it. There's six, there's seven. So a six and a half is just in the middle somewhere. You can tell I can't be deadly accurate. So we're looking at do you know what you're doing? So that's six and a half. That's called Q1, which is called the lower quartile, LQ. So the upper quartile is 14. Some of you get the message now. So there's a 14 just there. And that's called Q3, which is the upper quartile. Now, why is it called a box of whisker plots? Because you draw a box across the middle. Because what we're really looking at and trying to figure out in particular is where is the middle? So an interquartile range is the middle in here. Now, the previous video, if you want to look up interquartile range, it's the length of this box. So I'm going to write it here. IQR equals the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So let's go to this box. The upper quartile was 14 and the lower quartile was six and a half. And here's where people do come unstuck. I do think of that as say as seven. 14 takes seven is seven. And you've got an extra half. So I go to the next bigger number. After six and a half, you've got seven. 14 takes seven is seven, but there's another half. Maybe if you thought it was $14, and you bought something worth $6.50, you can figure out how much you got left, and you got $7.50 left. But that works here. So that's the box. People commonly refer to it just as a box plot. So the big name, or the full name is box and whisker plot. And then across these two, and everything rubs out the lot if I try to do it, you put a line, and that's a whisker. So you've got a whisker in the lower end, and you've got a whisker in the upper end. So it's quite interesting if you have a look at it, so we've got a quarter of the scores here, we've got a quarter of the scores there, we've got a quarter of the scores there, and we've got a quarter of the scores there. By the way, watching uh, some of the um, internet news and things like that, it's quite interesting when they're looking at all sorts of data, how often they use box plots and comparing things. The interesting part is a lot of the times, instead of doing it horizontally, they do it vertically. So they'll look at the sales of a company or the uh, what's going on in the stock market, and they'll have all these little boxes drawn like this and then you'll have the next box for the next month might be drawn like this I'm being very freehand and then you might have the next one goes like this and you go what does it tell you about the data you go well would it have been better to have money there or would it have been better to have money there that means the sales have dropped everything's dropped down you can see it's dropped so it's a pretty good picture to have a quick look and see what's going on now for the next one do that you start going, uh-oh, this company's in trouble. And sometimes weird things happen, like they'll do a little box here, and, you know, it's all squished up and changed around. But each of those is what we call a five-number summary. A max, a min, a medium, a Q1, lower quartile, and Q3, an upper quartile. So it gives you a pretty, big, pretty quick picture. The interesting part is, would I choose that all that often in life? And I go, no. Oh, Probably not, but then I see it everywhere all the time. And it works out as a very quick picture. Now in high level maths, often they'll say make a comparison between what was going on and say this was January and that was February and that was March and that was April and that was May. And you talk about the, the highest score was in February, the lowest score was in April, the lowest median was in April, the highest median was in February, and you can go on and on. And you can say the highest upper quartile was February, the lowest lower quartile was in April, and you can just go on and on. But often it's just a statement of fact between those things and what's going on. Oh, that's enough. Um, hopefully you find that helpful. Um, if you're enjoying it, please press like, and uh, thanks for watching.